Hello everyone and welcome to a week of Linux news for the 16th of October 2016 and we're going to start with this little announcement from 20 years ago. A new project, the Cool Desktop Environment, KDE, which started out live on the 14th of October 1996. So yes, happy 20th birthday to KDE. My current desktop of choice. So the original email was sent out by Matthias Ettrick announcing the birth of this new graphical desktop. And there's even a timeline that uh, KDE have produced. So you can see the precursor of KDE with the Linux kernel being 1991. Qt was created in 1995. KDE was announced in 1996. No, and then we've got the development here. So the first beta was 12 months afterwards. KD1 was released in 1998. The mascot Conkey came out in 1999. It's quite a bit after. So KD4 came out in 2008. Then we got the move to Plasma 5, which was some way later, wasn't it? So that was, ah, here we go, 2014. So now that brings us to 2016, and yeah, so quite a lot has happened there. Ubuntu 16.10, which was codenamed Yak to Yak, was released this week, along with all the derivatives, and there's quite a lot in the list these days, so I'm not going to read all those out. But there's not been a spectacular amount of changes really in Ubuntu this time around. It's you got the upgrade of the kernel and an upgrade of various applications. So I've reviewed Ubuntu, Kubuntu, and Ubuntu Mate. In terms of changes on Kubuntu, it's more just a newer version of the Plasma desktop. Ubuntu Mate was a newer version of Mate desktop, but there's also a big change towards the GTK3 base. So in terms of most spectacular changes so far, it has been Ubuntu Mate, and I think, although I haven't read all the changes for the rest of the projects yet, I'm going to guess that Ubuntu Mate has been the most significant change and move forward. Linux 5 kernel is expected to be released in 2017, so the belief here is that we're halfway through development of Linux kernel 4. I'm basing it in a number of objects in the database. So version 3 was released when kernel git object database grew to 2 million objects. Version 4 was released when they crossed the 4 million mark. And Torvald said, so naturally, when you're into numerology, that unequivocally proves that version 5 will be when we reach 6 million objects. And today my git object database crossed the 5 million object mark. I wonder how many lines that is. <laughs> I dread to think. The Galaxy Note 7 has burnt a huge hole in Samsung's profit estimates. So it's estimated to have cost them $2.3 billion. <laughs> okay. So they slashed their estimated operating profit from 7.8 trillion won to 5.2 trillion won. The difference is $2.3 billion, almost all of which can be attributed to the disastrous rollout of the company's new smartphone, the Galaxy Note 7, and then a massive battery replacement program after a significant number of explosions, and then a complete recall and possibly scrapping of the brand altogether after those replacements were found to be faulty. Well, that is pretty disastrous for Samsung there. From some of the news articles I've seen, the belief appears to be the fast charging circuit within the phone. But I don't know really, because not all the explosions have taken place while the phones are being charged. It can make you appreciate the dangers of the lithium batteries in phones. I've seen videos on YouTube of what happens when you pierce a lithium battery with a knife. Uh, yeah, it explodes. I'll tell you what, you don't want it in your trousers or pants when it explodes. Uh, yeah, that could be quite uncomfortable. It did not help that the Galaxy 7 phones were designed to have the battery glued in place. Uh, didn't there used to be this uh, really good option with smartphones that you could remove the battery? Oh yeah. That would have helped in this situation. Actually, it probably wouldn't have done really, but hey, you can still say, removable batteries. So it turned out to be a serious design flaw as it was impractical to unglue and replace the power packs again and again. Simply the whole line had to be recalled and destroyed. In the meantime, Note 7 customers have been receiving special fireboxes in which to send back their potential bombs. <laughs> Black Lab Linux is moving to a commercial only distro. So you will have to pay to get this distro. For the first 45 days you can purchase either a box set of the product for 20 US dollars or a digital only download for 10 US dollars. The purchase box set will provide the GNOME 3 desktop environment only. After 45 days they will provide a free download of Black Lab Linux. And they also do an enterprise version which will be for purchase only. I did look at Black Lab Linux some time ago and 
honestly, it wasn't really that spectacular. It was based on Zubuntu 12.04 back then, and they'd added a whole heap of repositories, and it, yeah, it didn't really seem that great. I'm not sure I would really pay for that product because it was nothing that unique. It was just a, a desktop that you could have and some repositories that you could have. Although this paragraph here is interesting, how do you plan to compete with Red Hat and others who are already in the same business? And the answer, we already compete with them, and quite effectively, we have deployments in four out of five US military branches. Really? Numerous law enforcement agencies and educational facilities and in enterprise. We have successful deployments in telecom, and there are two press agencies that use Black Lab for everything on all levels of their business. That's what we want to see, and that's what we want more of. I'm quite surprised at that. Four out of five US military branches, though. What does that even mean? Perhaps that's a reason not to use Black Lab Linux now. Solus OS will have full disk encryption coming soon in Solus 1.2.1. I thought it already had that feature. Uh, honestly, I probably skipped through the installer so quick that I might not have noticed. You can now claim your cash in the PlayStation 3 Other OS settlement. Sony will pay $55 to US users who can show they used Linux on their console, and this dates back to the original fat PlayStation 3. If you bought your original console before April 2010, you can now claim some cash from Sony as part of the long litigated case over the removal of the Other OS feature. I'll leave a link to this news article in the video description so you can make the claim if you live in the United States and can show that you used Linux on your system. I've pushed out a new release of NoTrack. This is a network-wide tracker and ad blocking solution that I've been working on for quite some time now. So it comes with a new menu interface and it's a little bit more suitable for mobile phones now. You've still got the option of pausing blocking here at the top of the screen options that allows you to update block list, restart and shut down your system. So it's now up to version 0.7.18. The main reason I wanted to push this release out was to pave the way towards NoTrack version 0.8. This is now running on a SQL backend. So the data storage of these logs now is done in the SQL database and we've got a new method of searching here. I'll tell you what, it is rapid. Even though I'm running on a Raspberry Pi Model 2, I'm astounded at how quick it is. It literally is click, respond. Database is up, on the screen, and drawn. The older version used to wait a few seconds before it was rendered. This is because I was using PHP to pass the DNS log file. Well, now the passing is done in the background. So you can search by system. So I want to look at the activity done by a specific system. So this will be a mobile phone. Oh, what has that been up to? Oh, made these requests as it, uh, what time were these made? And you can look back historically as well. And not only that, there's this filter here for requests, allowed, blocked, local. You can implement this new SQL storage right now, but I wouldn't recommend it just yet. In fact, I'm not gonna say how to do it. You'll have to look through on GitHub to see how you actually implement it. A couple of Linux distros other than the Ubuntu 16.10 that have been released is Parrot, Parrot version 3.2, this is a security testing Linux distro based on Debian. I have to say it's not one I've ever heard of before and I sort of wonder what this can offer over and above Kali Linux which is one of the finest uh, security testing Linux distros and security testing in quotes because you can do other things with it. And we have Xtix as well, Xtix version 16.5 which is based on Ubuntu 16.10 so perhaps I shouldn't have included this in the list but anyway is not an official derivative, so hey. It uses the LXQt desktop, so kind of like LXDE would. And that concludes the news from this week, so thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.